Hello, I am Emmanuel. I'm here to present our work on the recurrent inference machines as inverse problem solvers for our myro lexometry. T1 relaxation time is a promising biomarker for a range of diseases. Conventionally, T1 maps are estimated by fitting a known signal model to a series of weighted images with different contrast settings. This inverse problem, however, is usually a condition, and errors might be amplified by the presence of acquisition noise. To stabilize the problem, often regularizers are included in the cost function that is minimized, but because the probability distribution is dependent on the data and the optimal regularization strength varies with the noise level, the definition of the prior is non-trivial. We propose a new framework for a myro lexometry based on the recurrent inference machines. The RIM is an, an iterative framework that learns an efficient optimization scheme. It uses the gradient of a likelihood function to enforce data consistency and to plan parameter updates, similar to a gradient descent approach. At each iteration, the neural network portion of the framework, G gamma, produces updates to the parameter estimates, iteratively approximating a solution. The RIM also receives as input the current parameter estimates, with which it keeps track of the optimization procedure and from which it implicitly learns a prior distribution over the parameters. We expect that a learned prior can generalize better across noise levels than conventional methods and improve the estimation precision. Additionally, because the RIM is a hybrid framework, that is, it enforces data consistency, we expect it to also improve the estimation quality over feedforward networks that only learn the data distribution. Estimates are initialized at the beginning of the optimization and, at each iteration, they are updated until the final estimate is produced. The network is trained by comparing the estimates at each iteration to the ground truth parameter maps. In our work, gamma is composed by a series of convolutional layers interleaved with gated recurrent units used to keep track of the optimization. We use data simulated datasets to train and evaluate the networks. These datasets are composed of pairs of simulated ground truth parameter maps, kappa, and simulated weighted images, s. Kappa was constructed by assigning different A, B, and T1 values to each tissue in a digital anatomical model. Intertissue variability was simulated with ad additive Gaussian noise. S was simulated with the T1 relaxation model using kappa from before and a series of inversion times. In the training set, samples were corrupted with Gaussian noise with varying SNR levels to simulate acquisition noise. In total, 15,000 pairs were created and used to train both the RIM and a ResNet, which was used as a baseline for the deep learning methods in this work. The evaluation dataset was generated in a similar way. Acquisition noise was simulated for selected SNR levels. Each dataset contained 100 samples with independent noise realization. We compared the RIM to a maximum likelihood estimator, or MLE, and an implementation of the ResNet. To evaluate each method, we measured the estimation accuracy in terms of the relative bias and the estimation precision in terms of coefficient of variation. Here, we present their distribution across the masked brain tissues. This graph shows the relative bias of the T1 estimates. The MLE is shown in blue, the ResNet in green, and the RIM in red. For most cases where SNR is higher than 3, all methods produce quantitative maps with comparable medium relative bias, but both neural networks displayed a larger range of values than the MLE. The second figure shows the coefficient of variation for the same data. The RIM presented lower CV or higher precision than the other methods, independently of the SNR level. This indicates that it learned an efficient prior that can generalize well for different noise levels. Today, I showed you a new method for T1 mapping based on the recurrent inference machines. The prior learned by the RIM enables a higher estimation precision without compromising in accuracy and our results suggest that the RIM is a promising technique for quantitative MRI. I would like to thank you for your attention and everyone that contributed to this work. Thank you.